So what's going on, toxic gamers? You might want to stop rolling your fat doobies around, guys, because this might be a mayday situation. Looks like that we better get hit by some hurricanes tonight because the way it's going crazy. We got the ghost of tampon situation, raging wildfires. Yes, the ghost of Tsushima, ghost of Yode, right? Ubisoft, I would not be shocked, guys, if they actually get shut down, though. Yay! We had the BBC Samurai situation. That's raging wildfire still. They're refunding people as well. Crazy situation, man. Let, let's go for two likes on the video. If you, if you love your mama, if you love God, let's go for two likes on the video, guys. And apparently this chick... You know, Alyssa Mercante ended up also sending out a cease and desist to this gentleman as well. Oh, so they're trying to sue this man, which I want to talk about. But before that, we also got the Dustborn situation. And I, I I mean, what else can I say, man? The gaming situation is truly wild. It's truly getting out of hands, guys. I also do want to shout out all of you guys recently, for, for recently following over on the Instagram. So shout out to all of you guys for that. If you do have an Instagram, I would definitely love to have you there. Link is in the pinned comment, but shout out to the homie Smash JT. Check this out, roll it. Everyone's favorite game of the year candidate, Dustborn, is making an appearance at the Tokyo Game Show to Bruh. a roaring crowd of no one. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I saw this post initially from Caprutus and then researched it some more, finding someone posted it to Reddit what? and talking about how Dustborn Man, you know even the BBC Samurai is not gonna be showing up at the Tokyo. What the hell? <laughs> even Ubisoft, Yves Guimau, Guimau français, tabernacle français. Ah ouais, si je pète tes dents là, ah ma balle les couilles là. Français, ladies and gentlemen, French. Yves Guimau, Guimau. It's not hard to pronounce it. A lot of people have a difficult time pronouncing the CEO names. It's Yves Guimau, okay? Guimau, okay? Yeah. So even the homie Yves, Yves Guimau. It's like, bro, like, I'm gonna drop some pieces. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. We ain't gonna show no BBC Samurai at Tokyo Game Show. They're delaying the game. They're refunding people pre-orders. Deadass, though. I'm not even making this up, guys. Like, a crazy situation. I know some of you might be looking like this right now. Maybe your dog's looking like this. I mean, come on, man. Give them some Scooby Snacks, though. Yay! Situation crazy. It's a May Day right now. But, all right, let's get back to the content here, boo-boo is making an appearance at the Tokyo Game Show where they have a whole booth set up with three stools and a screen and no one is playing it and it's just so embarrassing at least three people need to show up there man damn what y'all doing guys like come pathetic. On, you man. gotta wonder where are they getting all this money from I mean obviously <laughs> the grants and all the the taxes and all that stuff but like seriously this is getting out of control with how yeah. Dustborn not only is a pathetically embarrassingly terrible game if you can even call it that but just how promoted it is mm. being shoved down everyone's yeah. throat with the agenda driven ideologies of basically a pro antifa training simulator Ooh. game that nobody no. wants to play yet keeps showing up everywhere hit that hey. subscribe give me a like and check out tranquilo papi smashjt.com for the full article breaking down dustborn at the tokyo game show and a screenshot that got leaked to reddit that shows what looks to be Ragnar Tornquist, the CEO of Red Thread Games, that I made a video on him, and he's quite the racist oh character. God. If you're not familiar with him, check out that video. I'll put it above me right now. He's not somebody that I'd want to spend any time around whatsoever. It seems like some companies never learn, and Red Thread Games is legitimately the prime example here. Their failure of a game, Dustborn, is still being aggressively promoted at the Tokyo yeah. Game Show, and what can only be described as a desperate and pathetically misguided attempt to push their propaganda onto the masses. Taking a look at the photo, one can't help to marvel at the sheer wasted resources, and even worse, taxpayer money that's being fun- Man, like, look at that. So nobody's like really paying attention. He's the only one there, the CEO. Is he playing though? Like it feels like that. Okay, he wanna watch other people play. I believe he's also playing, probably have a controller, so he's maintaining like six feet distance. That's good, that's good. Bruh. That's good, you know, you don't wanna be glued to a monitor. You know, I'm trying to be optimistic here. I'm trying to find like some good stuff out of it. So people, of course, there are no fights happening. So that's a plus, guys. There are no beefs happening. It looks like that everybody's kind of peaceful there. He's enjoying Dustborn in peace and other people enjoying other games in peace, guys. So I... I don't see no problems here, guys. I feel like that everybody's peaceful. That's good. Nobody's throwing stones. Nobody's throwing rocks. There's no, like, hurricanes going down. I think it's a beautiful day. I think, yeah. Oh, God bless, man. Like, people are blessed right now. Yeah, all of these people blessed. You're watching this video. You're blessed, man. I don't see no problems here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't see no problems here. Yeah. Funneled into promoting a game that nobody <sighs> in their right mind would ever play. 
Unless you're crazy. crazy. Monkey Man 0445, Dustborn is so toxic, what? we might have to get you an iron lung. Bro, I am positive Dustborn is what got me sick. I am positive, positive that game got me sick, bro. The woke mind virus tried to tried to infect my brain, and then it moved to my stomach and ruined me. While Red Thread Games insists on promoting Dustborn with lavish displays and showroom space at one of the biggest events in the world, the game's performance on Steam is telling a very different story. As of this recording, there are only eight people playing the game on Steam. Eight people out of millions of Steam users worldwide. Eight people are playing Dustborn. Now, it'd be one thing if the game was like, you know, three, four, five years old. The game's like a month old. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they still can't get an audience. It's not an Bruh. isolated moment either. The game's all time peak of concurrent players is a pitiful 83 people. Eight people playing the game. I, I, you guys are crazy, man. I have to blame all of you out there, man. Bruh. Like, I blame all of you. You guys are the reason why this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm joking, man. Like, why? You, you suckers out here, you be slapping Slurpees every day, man. You be, like, drinking some coffee. You're getting Tim Hortons. You're getting, like, all the... You know, you you be chilling out there. Why can't you play Dustborn for a little bit, guys? Come on, man. Eight people. That's embarrassing, man. In Urdu, I would like to say, Yar, inne bachong ki tarah maara hai. Bachong ki tarah maara hai inne. Yar, yar, kuch to sharam kar lo, yar. Kuch to banda khel leta hai thodi der. Yar, chalo, user number hi bada deta hai, you know what I mean? Like, guys, like, come on, man. Eight people. That's devastating, bro. That's devastating. And you're saying that nobody showed up at the Tokyo conference? I need to still get down to, like, him getting lost, uh, like, uh, not necessarily sued, but uh, cease and desist, the, the stuff that happens before you get sued, right? In a way, it's a lawsuit, right? So I want to talk about that too in a second. But like, damn, so eight people playing or loving the game, I should say. Eight people loving the game, enjoying the game, right? Uh, yeah, maybe some uh, half of them are devs. Maybe six people are devs and two people are enjoying the game. I don't know, man. Bruh. But the fact that nobody actually showed up at a booth, that's like, bro, like, what are we doing, man? Come on, guys, show some respect, man. <laughs> Show some respect, guys. Well, that's a staggeringly Damn, low number for a game that's been promoted as an important. I better not see you guys uh, smashing more than eight likes. Okay, please like the video, guys. I, I better not see more than eight likes, guys. More than eight likes is absolutely needed on this video. Narrative experience. But it gets even worse. There have been multiple instances where Steam's concurrent player count for Dustborn has hit zero. Times where literally nobody was playing this game. Bruh. Zero people worldwide on Steam Bruh. playing Dustborn. Valiant Renegade said, one, Dustborn paid about 2,500 USD for this booth at the Tokyo Game Show. Two, there are four people playing Dustborn on Steam in Japan, as per subsequent side scroller stuttering Craig tweet. And three, ergo, Dustborn actually managed to lose money on a freaking expo booth. And that was in response to stuttering Craig saying, good to see. You, you know what? Like, I have to shout out Ubisoft. I have to shout out Eve Gimo. <laughs> for not being this stupid enough to have. Because, yeah, even, even like, for BBC Samurai, like, the fans did not show up for BBC Samurai last year, right? Like, at least uh, people, Japanese people were using Ubisoft boot as, like, a resting spot. You know, like, be because, like, everywhere there were so many people, so many gamers, like, all the boots uh, were filled. So people were not finding spot to chill, to, like, wind down, uh, and lay down maybe. Like, have just, like, you know, five minutes of peace, perhaps, like, get a quick bite to eat, right? So people were not having that, but then they were like, aha! Ubisoft is right there, and there's nobody there. So, let me just show up, okay? I'm real quick, I'm gonna just, uh, you know, pay my respects to the BBC, to the Captain BBC! Right? So, yeah, salute to Captain BBC. So, and also, I'm just gonna get a quick bite to it, and I'm gonna find my place. But this year, Ubisoft Eve Gimo said that, nah, bro, like, we ain't that dumb, though. We ain't that dumb, we're not gonna pay... How, however much they need to pay to be able to have that event held at Tokyo Games Showcase, right? We ain't that stupid. We stupid, but we ain't that stupid. So get mama with that crap, though. We ain't gonna show no BBC Samurai at Tokyo Game Show for you suckers out here that got no respect for over BBC Samurai, okay? So they did not show up. Shout out to them. But Dustborn, I guess it makes sense because Dustborn is one of those games that we heard they took taxpayer money so norway taxpayer money was actually poured into this game a hundred and fifty thousand euros is what what is what's being reported 
uh, that they used from the government. The government funded this game. So the government was behind this, guys. Oh, shit. At least the Norway government, the Norwegian government was behind it. And they put out this game and they carefully crafted this masterpiece, so-called masterpiece. And yeah, like people are... Only eight people are loving this game, and now maybe it feels like that they paid 2,500 USD uh, USD from their pockets. To be fair, though, like I don't think they paid this from pockets. I feel like that that's also from the taxpayer money, man. So yeah, sorry, sorry guys, but it feels like that they're wasting taxpayer money once again. See, the tremendous buzz for Dustborn has made its way over to Japan. Despite countless opportunities and backing from industry heavyweights, Dustborn has consistently failed to gain any traction whatsoever. The game was published by Quantic Dream, a very troubled studio with a reputation that isn't the greatest out there. And I also covered Quantic Dream yeah. in another video, if you missed that one. They are quite the mess. Dustborn was given prime promotional spots at major events like the Game Awards and Gamescom, where it had trailers featured during the key moments of these events. Xbox also threw its weight behind the game, pushing it to their audience as a notable release. The marketing efforts didn't even stop there. Companies like MI5 Communications were hired to promote the game, even going so far as to recruit streamers to play it. The sheer push behind this trash makes you wonder what more is going on behind the scenes. And there was even a physical release that made its way all the way to Japan. Like, there are some fantastic game experiences out there that don't yeah. even get physical releases, yet Dustborn did. I, I mean, could you imagine, like, showing up to Tokyo Game Show, right? It's a lot of people's dream. It's like, I, I would say right now it's one of those events that would be on par with E3. Pro may not, pr probably not, but, like, E3 don't exist no more, right? So it probably does in that aspect, if that makes sense. I, although I've never been there, so I'm just trying to assume it that it would be that good but the point that i'm trying to okay forget about everything the point that i'm trying to make here is that if you're at the tokyo game showcase right you got hundreds of games there probably a dozens of boot right do you really do you really want to waste your limited time your precious time on dustborn probably not you got places to be you got games to try you got a lot of games to enjoy right so yeah oh absolutely right like you yeah so like are you really gonna waste your time absolutely not here's the thing though you know what i mean right i'm in canada so if this booth was in canada and i do apologize on ubisoft behalf guys i'm also in montreal yeah guys i i do i do apologize when i came here it was not like this now it is my bad okay my bad I, I I I wish it was not like this, so I apologize on their behalf, okay? Because they're never gonna apologize truly, <laughs> truly. But I can guarantee you, dog, if this Dustborn boot was here in Canada, at least they would have two, three people. If it was there in America, oh yeah, there would be a lot of people at the boots, though. Let's be real. Let's be real. I don't understand how this happened. Gamers have made it clear. They don't want to play Dustborn. Nobody likes this game. It is garbage. It is trash. It is worse than garbage and trash. Yet it keeps showing up at places like Expos and the Tokyo Game Show. It's the yeah. biggest game show in Japan. <laughs> and they have like a large cutout set up yeah. spot. And there's no one there. It's Damn. so embarrassing. It yeah, in, in the US at least they would have three, two, three people. Canada, let's just say four or five people, right? Like at least they would get some love. Like, yeah, like they would get some love, man. You know, you know, you know. yeah, exactly, my man, exactly. They would get some love, ladies and gentlemen. But, you know, in Japan, nobody... <clears throat> In Japan, nobody gives a damn! Looks like that my balls just dropped right there, bro. Yeah. And not even the people surrounding it are looking at it. It's like, it's funny. It's it's comedy at this point. It is. Oh, it all is. you can do is point and laugh and say, yeah, Dustborn, the game that just never lived, yet refuses to die. It's not our fault that Dustborn can't muster any genuine interest out of people that are begrudgingly live streaming it because if you're hypnotic, you got people donating money to you to make you play it. And you don't want to play it, but you kind of have to. Uh, shout out to the homie Hypnotic, man. It is it is crazy that he put himself through. But in a way, though, it's like he's making money. YouTubers have been making more money through it. And if you guys uh, are Oil Prince, which I think some of you guys are, be become a member, man. Become a member uh, on the channel. I, I got some, you know, non-existing... I, I got a dog to feed, guys. I got a dog to feed, you know what I'm saying? It gets tough out here. It gets rough. My dog be looking like this right now. So, yeah, become a member, guys. I help support the channel. But I get it. In the case of Hypnotic, people are, like, giving him 200. Holy crap. 142. Damn. Damn. So, he's making that paper, though. He's making that paper, right? So, you know, it, it is true. YouTubers have made more money than Dustborn and Concord, bro. Concord, absolutely. So, those suckers made, like, what? Uh, less than a million dollars? And they lost 
over 300 uh like we heard reports that they spent about 400 million dollars making that game then i saw this from the homie uh asmongold and asmongold says that he he spoke with somebody behind the scenes or he got this information behind the scenes and he said in a video that it was more than 400 million oh, shit. Oh, shit. believe what you want but it seems like that at the very least they spent 400 million dollars on concord don't even make sense i don't get it but okay whatever they did right and they made uh, almost let's just say a million dollars uh, and they lost 399 million usd minimum okay and then they refunded everybody so the million they made they also lost that as well so youtubers youtubers and even if you made a video if you guys also make videos let me know in the comments below and uh, let me know if you make videos or not i'll i'll check out your channel as well okay just say i make videos i make videos uh, in the comments and uh yeah like it seems like that anybody who made video if if you made a dollar if you made ten dollars a hundred dollars making videos if you're a bigger creator and you bigger creator and you made thousands and thousands of dollars on it you made more money than dustborn and concord combined it don't even make sense no more guys youtubers making more money than this uh, Dude, pile of, of crash that, and just watching him play it i i can't even i can't put up with it it's literally torture like watching someone i enjoy and i enjoy watching them play games and they have some good comic relief which is enjoyable and even with that all going together with dustborn it's still torture oh god and they exploit gig workers oh shit is she pregnant with theo's baby they're never getting a no, man. Riveting gameplay. So she prego and you got the gameplay as well? Damn. And I'd love to no, talk to you about what? No, I'm not lying. What is going on? Hey, hey, hey. LeBron James being born or what's going on? Eh? <gasps> what was that? We also had the Madam Savvy playthrough as well, which, which predated everyone. And when she played through it, that was another one where it's just like, how is she doing this? It is... It's like work. It's an yeah. effort to trench through and, and, just and, and that happened before. Now apparently he also ended up getting sued by Alyssa Mercante or cease and desist, cease and desist. But yes, this uh so re your defamation and harassment of our client Alyssa Mercante, bruh. Okay, roll this. I spent the last couple of weeks really stressing out, and I know it's easy for people on the outside to look at it and be like, why are you even worried? Because you know they don't have a case. But mm. here's the thing when it comes to court and law, even when someone doesn't have a case. Nothing's actually settled until it actually goes there and people figure stuff out. So no matter how confident I was, I was still stressed out a little bit. I mean, I got kids, I got a wife, I got a family, yeah. I got I got a mortgage, I got things. Yeah, you, you got some bull squash to deal with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah like this is, uh, you ain't got time to play around with that bull squash. I get that. Going on in my life that I, I would like to keep together. So when something as ridiculous as this letter comes through from Alyssa Mercante and her lawyer, it's only natural that I stress out a little bit. So I did what any normal man would do. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I contacted Ron Coleman, the badass lawyer that represented that park place and that situation with the black girl gamers, and put that situation to rest immediately. And I contacted him. Yo, what was what was his uh, pride? Name his pride. Name his pride. Like the price, the price, the price, the price. How much he charged? Uh... And man, Charges. he came through with a clutch with one of the most epic retort letters I could have ever seen, and I could not have written it better myself. Okay. JT. Hit the latest attempt to avoid accountability for her own behavior has decided to try and weaponize the legal system to silence any criticism for her public actions. As I stated in my previous video, her quote unquote lawyer had recently sent me a cease and desist letter accusing me of defamation and harassment. Yet conveniently, the letter leaves out some crucial details about Alyssa's own conduct. For example, how she contacted my wife, or talked about how she used to work in sex work previously. Which is anything but professional, much to her lawyer's chagrin. They seem to think Alyssa is this goody two-shoes person that never says or done anything wrong. And a quick 30 second TLDR for those that don't know what's going on. Alyssa Mercante, who has shifted from a failed attempt at being a quote-unquote cam girl, aka sex worker, to a clickbait-driven journalism career, and I use journalism very lightly, has become notorious for her aggressive and combative behavior online. As a far-left activist, she's been accused of racist and narcissistic tendencies, consistently targeting and stalking her critics and their families. She's known for her strong support of DEI and Sweet Baby Inc. agendas, and McCarthy's actions have included everything from public challenges for physical okay. fights to threats of lawsuits to multiple parties, often coupled oh, with a smug and abusive demeanor to those she's dealing with. Her conduct, marked by a pattern of harassment and divisiveness, calls into question both her credibility and her profession. You're a effing 45-year-old man. Look at what you're doing with your life. Well, at least he's not sucking D's out there, I guess, but, uh... 
capitalism and the games he got a wife kids he's paying mortgage he got a house so he's putting he's taking care of his family you know he's yeah and he's uh laughing at video game stuff which is quite light-hearted but of course they're destroying the video game so he's making content and i'm assuming that's only one of his revenue stream he probably got other stuff going as well so yeah he's doing what he's enjoying and laughing at the bull squash that's going down in gaming so i think he's pretty odd and media journalism space which is one of the biggest reasons why she's not the biggest fan of me because i call it like i see it and i'm spot on with her Alyssa constantly antagonizes ridicules and provokes me and many others publicly on twitter clearly attempting to poke the bear and elicit reactions and then cry victim as soon as you respond to them it's really what she said you can do coke and not be called a cokehead or some bull squash i'm not gonna rewind it but like i just read it in passing interesting how her road what? only goes one way so with all that in mind i contacted ron coleman after i got this most ridiculous five page yeah. letter from the most ridiculous lawyer i think i've ever had to deal with in my entire life and while it was very expensive ron coleman came through in the clutch and this guy though? i just there's not enough okay you know, that's the thing though how much though how much that's the thing right because of these stupid lawsuits like he's gonna lose some money i believe he put up like a gofundme or something like that and people did came and uh pay for it last time i checked uh the his gofundme uh, uh the, the one he set up was around like 2600 usd that's a lot of money man that's a lot of money so the community definitely came in that's like shout out to the community man and also shout out to you shout out to you guys because i'm certain some of you guys uh of course a lot of you guys also watch smash jt so i'm assuming some of you also kind of helped him out because yeah like he's he's gonna lose money with this one but ultimately at the end when he wins uh, he can ask money from Alyssa for all that wasted time and the fees that he had to pay for the lawyers right i'm assuming that's gonna go down so in a way it's gonna be a win-win for him of good things i can say about this absolute legend ron coleman took it upon himself to go through the evidence piece by piece and figure out what the hell were they even saying because again as confident as i was i am not a lawyer nor do i pretend to be one on youtube so i needed a real good expensive lawyer yeah, to yeah. represent yeah, yeah. me to make sure that yeah, i'm yeah. getting it right by email yeah, to yeah. lane haygood in response to Alyssa mercante's threats to me dear sirs we represent jeff tarzia and write in response to your correspondence of september 8th 2024 we will not rebut your assertions point by point none of the statements you attribute to mr tarzia in section one of your letter is defamatory under new york or california law because they are either true or are protected Okay, makes sense. So I'm assuming Jeff would be in New York and uh, California. That's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Usual suspects, man. Usual suspects. So I'm assuming she is in California. I don't know if she is or not, but just based off of reading this and based off seeing what's going on, I guess it's very easy to uh, predict, man. Protected opinion or polemic. Additionally, your speculation. A any of you guys in California? Uh, I, I don't want to label everybody uh, as like a loony like that. Uh, because it's not true, right? Not everybody, because of one bad apple or a couple of bad apples, I cannot call the entire tree bad. I'm sure there are a lot of good people in California. And a couple of years ago, I had the privilege to visit Los Angeles and I did enjoy my time there. I did enjoy my time there for, I was there just visiting for a few days, right? But as to what Mr. Tarzia quote unquote knew, what motivated any comments he may have made and the financial operation of Mr. Tarzia's social media are incorrect and baseless which is exactly what i was thinking and yeah. assuming but again not a lawyer so after talking with ron about this we concluded that yep that's exactly what was happening mm. here for these reasons and many others your assertion that miss mercante would prevail if this matter were taken to court if. is not only unfounded but yeah. is a transparently empty threat in mm. fact as you are doubtless aware if these claims were litigated in either new york or california they would not only be dismissed but yeah. it is your client who would be exposed to the potential liability there we go a liability under the anti-slap law in both states which i do not know what slap means but i can only guess right because it's a baseless thread he's just covering the news he's not like exposing anything he's just bringing light to what's being uh publicly put out there by these activists and by and what's happening in the gaming industry right but guys whatever you do do not watch this video like this is one of those videos that just went down it's like a crazy situation do not watch this video but check out the video on the left and i'll see you right there man i see you